really good electrolysis, you're going to need the following items. A non-reactive glass or plastic container. A couple gallons of tap water. A couple of carbon battery rods. If you do any type of bottle digging or metal detecting, you'll find tons of these carbon rods left over from old fashioned batteries. They're the absolute best thing to use as electrodes for electrolysis. You're also gonna need some mechanics wire. This is also called baling wire. This is mineral oil, which is the same thing as baby oil. Now, if you don't wanna use mineral oil, you don't have to, but to preserve the relic, you would uh, heat it up in mineral oil or your other option. The other option is candle wax, but you don't have to go to Hobby Lobby and buy expensive candle wax. This right here is just melted down candles from Goodwill. You're gonna need an old iron relic that's dirty and covered in rust. This one is a piece of a plow part. This is a, a horse drawn plow and it's meaningful and significant to me because I found it and it symbolizes a, a simpler age, simpler times. This, this may be turn of the century, I'm not sure, but it's significant to me, so I wanna preserve it. So I'm gonna get all this rust off with electrolysis, and it's gonna be easy too. Next, we have baking soda. A lot of people use washing soda, which is sodium carbonate. I use sodium bicarbonate, and when you look at the end product, you can't tell the difference. You're, you're not gonna be able to tell whether it was done with sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate. This is what most people have. This works absolutely fine. The next thing that you're gonna need is a drill with some drill bits and a screw because this is how you're going to attach the mechanics wire to the carbon electrodes. The last thing that you're gonna need is an old fashioned battery charger, the kind with the clips on it like this. Now this is a one amp charger. I bought this for $5 at a garage sale. I would not spend any more than $5 on this. You can buy these new, but what you can't use is a digital smart charger. Um, the circuitry isn't set up to do this. It's not gonna work. It has to be an old fashioned direct current battery charger. Okay, now it's time for me to make an electrode. I've got my carbon battery rod right here which I found this thing is probably 60 years old and now I'm gonna drill a hole in it so that I can put a screw in it so let me take a small drill bit and just drill like a guide hole in here okay so now I'm going to enlarge the hole with a bigger drill so up next I'm gonna take a tiny little screw that just barely fits in the hole and turn it so that it's halfway seated. From there, I'm gonna take my mechanics wire and bend a loop in it so that the loop can snugly fit underneath the screw. Okay, I'm gonna tighten this up just tight enough so that this bailing wire, mechanics wire, is firmly seated. So now it's time to make the electrolyte. I'm gonna put some baking soda in there or some washing powder. I like baking soda. How much do you put in? I don't know. I'm not sure. But I can tell you how to find out. First, you put a little bit on the bottom. Then, you add your tap water. Okay, the way that this works is that if you put baking soda in the water, it will allow the water to actually conduct electricity. Now, if I put these two battery clips in the water, they're gonna act as electrodes, and the process of electrolysis is actually gonna start. So when I put them in the water, I should see bubbling, which is the splitting of water molecules into oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. So let me put them in there and see if they start bubbling. Be very careful not to touch them together. Yes, I do see bubbling. Let me get a close up. Okay, let me show you what I'm doing here. I've got one battery clip connected to some bailing wire just to demonstrate electrolysis. And I've got the other battery clip outside of the container. Watch what happens when I hook this battery clip to the side here and get it wet. Okay, if you watch closely, if you watch closely, you should see bubbles rising off of the bailing wire in the water. Let's check it out. Okay, so we see bubbles rising off of the bailing wire. That means that the process 
is actually working. Electrolysis is happening. There is enough baking soda in this solution right here to actually allow electrons to go from one electrode through the solution into the other electrode. And what we're making here is probably oxygen gas, um, which causes things to combust, to burn better, or it could be hydrogen gas, which is flammable. So you have to do this in an open area. You probably don't want to do it in your basement. has to be wrapped and suspended in such a way that this wire right here, this bailing wire, does not touch the solution. So it's gonna be hanging with just the top of the relic out. If you put this wire in the solution, most of the electricity is gonna be used to split water atoms, uh, water molecules, rather than taking the rust off of this. So it has to be suspended with this bare wire out of the solution. Do you see that? Do you see, what, do you see what's happening? Amazing, right? Not really. I didn't even plug this in yet. So all those little bubbles coming out, that's just like air pockets that are trapped inside the rust. So no, it's not turned on yet. And when I do turn it on, um, it's not going to do anything. And that gets a lot of people concerned because they, they think that it should be bubbling like crazy. Just like when I put the bare wire in there, it should be bubbling. But there's a slight problem that we're going to have to overcome. Here's what's going on. Okay, so here's a problem that gets a lot of people concerned. When they hook up the electrolysis tank, they don't see anything happening, and they think it should be bubbling like crazy. But the problem is that this relic is covered with a very thick layer of iron oxide, which is rust, and dirt. And this bare wire right here is not really touching any good metal. So your options are to try to drill a hole in here and insert a screw then hook the wire to the screw. The problem is that is really, really hard to do. If you're really gonna drill a good hole into this cast iron, you're really gonna have to be a good machinist, and I'm not. The second thing that you can do is take some kind of tool or file and try to gouge your way through all this rust so that the bare wire can touch some better metal. That helps, but it's gonna take about 700 strokes of the file to get through all of that rust. The best thing to do is to just hook this up, get it wet, and then walk away. Eventually, the electrolysis will happen in this wet portion right here and it will eat its way through the rust and get down to bare metal. And then, this relic will be bubbling like crazy. All right, so here we are, 48 hours later, and that looks terrible, doesn't it? It's okay. You see, the carbon rods slowly disintegrate as the electrolysis process functions. So you do lose a little bit of carbon. And you don't want to change the water because over time the, the water becomes more, I think, alkaline as sodium hydroxide builds up. And we don't have time to get into the chemistry of it, but this is not bad. I tell you what, let's change the water so that we can actually see the bubbles coming off the relic and uh, it'll be good footage. Isn't that cool looking? What you're looking at here is the electrolysis of water. You see water is breaking down into hydrogen and oxygen. What you can't really see is the electrolysis of rust, iron oxide. Um, iron oxide will break apart and become other substances. I know that this relic right here will get coated in a mineral called magnetite. Chemists aren't really sure how exactly that works, but in any case, this electrical current is causing the iron oxide to fall apart. So when we get done with this, we're going to have to scrub it really well to get all the magnetite off of it. So uh, it's, it's working. It's doing, it's doing absolutely fine. We're just going to have to wait a little bit longer. All right, so here's some of the relics that are done. This one right here is completely done. It's been de-rusted and boiled in hot oil. 
or wax and I did not get that on camera. Uh, this one right here is not done yet but when I do heat this up in hot wax that'll be part two. So that's that's a very important part of this electrolysis. You can see that there's still some rust on the back. The whole thing at one time looked like this and you could barely read this. So I'm pretty happy with this. Um, heating it up in oil and wax is going to be part two. I'll have to post that next week. Stay tuned.